You know, I'm having a ball with you today. Well, I, I hope I made it a little bit of fun. I, I know I have a great time, and uh, my family would always say this is the best spot for me. <laughs> well, I'm telling you, I always thought you were just a tough guy, but you know, you weren't just a great hockey player. You can fish, too. Well, you know, my dad took me fishing when I was six years old, and I haven't stopped since. Well, I'll tell you what. Hi, I'm Daryl Cronzi, and I'm with a real good friend of mine, Bobby Bond. And uh, we're catching some salmon? We're catching some salmon, my friend. Stay <laughs> with us, because we're up at Millbank Sound, and we're catching salmon. We're catching the best, <laughs> I'll tell you that. <laughs> I'm going fishing all the time, and my baby's going fishing too. Bet your life that your sweet wife can catch more fish than you. And a fish will bite if you got the right bait. Now here's a little something that I'd like to relate with my pole and my line. I'm going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. My baby's going fishing too. Going fishing with Daryl Cronzy is brought to you in part by Yamaha. When you want the best. Abu Garcia for life. Berkeley Trilene, Canada's strongest fishing line. And by Montana's Cookhouse Saloon, fresh country cooking. To Cronzy, there's no better experience than trolling British Columbia's famed Millbank Sound for coho and spring salmon in late August. Especially if he has the opportunity to fish those same waters with one of the finest defensemen to ever play in the National Hockey League. Today, Daryl and his fishing partner, Hockey Hall of Famer Bobby Bond, are taking part in the Legends of the Game Fishing Classic, being staged far up on the northern shores of British Columbia at West Coast Resort's Millbank Sound. Stay with us while we discover if Bond is as good with a fishing rod as he was with a hockey stick. Mr. Bond! Well, we got some action. Have you got a keeper there? <laughs> <laughs> I right. saw him. I saw him. Look at this now. He's taking that flasher. Yeah. Isn't that something? And, hey, and they're fast here, eh? Yeah. You know, you've been up and down popping releases here for about 15 times. Yeah, no. It's a nice fish there. Look at that, just taking that thing right across the water. So, so all those years in hockey, right, your elbows still work? Oh, yeah, no. Not as well as Howe's, but... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we better say that much, eh? No, no. He had a little bit more pointed. Did, did you ever get into it with, with Howe? With Howe? Yeah. Oh, he gave me a nice little... Uh, uh, a little uh, love tap. Uh, a little love tap for about 23 stitches <laughs> on the top of the head. I look like a sperm whale. <laughs> and you just saw that one out here a few minutes ago. <laughs> bring him, just bring him right around this side. I'm gonna get the net. There he is. There he is. Hey, that is a nice coho. Hey, real nice coho. What's the biggest coho you've caught, Bob? About 16. 16? Yeah. This one's gonna go about uh, 11. How's that? That's great. Fantastic. Oh, hey, Whoa. this is a nice coho. Hey. <laughs> look, oh, at <laughs> look at this. Oh, look at that. The Williams right. Williams Quicksilver, Bob. <laughs> nice fish. <laughs> hey, I'll, you know what? I'll take the coho just for the jumps. <laughs> All right. Nice fish. Nice fish. Let's see if he comes up into the net. Nice fish, Bob. All right. Hey, now that's a thick <laughs> Thick coho, <laughs> eh? Bob, I want to show you something. You know, Bob, we were talking this morning, and I said I've got a special spoon, right? Right. And you know Williams Lures? They make the, the trout spoons? Right. I asked them to paint up some spoons for me, right? Yeah. So they went with a purple. Yeah. And this Quicksilver catches fish. Isn't that? Purple on one side, yeah. black on the other. Now, Bob, I want to ask you a question. I want you to tell me the truth. You were one of the best defensemen ever put on skates, okay? All right. And we're going to talk about this broken leg, yeah, right? Yeah. What year you played with a broken leg? In 1964, and that that was uh, April the 23rd, 1964, when we broke that leg. And you got the goal that game, got, didn't you? I got the goal in overtime, and uh, we we had to win that game. And Detroit, if Detroit had won that game, they'd won the Stanley Cup. So then we came back to Toronto and beat uh, Detroit 4-1, and it was all over. So it must have felt good, eh? Oh, not the broken leg. Not the broken not, leg. Not the no. broken leg. But no, six weeks later, uh, when I finally took the cast off in Vancouver, uh, 
uh, just south of here is, uh, and I, 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 I soaked it in the bathtub and uh, took a cast off because my leg was hurting so damn much. <laughs> but uh, anyways, it, it was uh, the number 17th sporting highlight of the 20th century. No kidding. By Sports Illustrated. Listen, Bobby, I'm going to put this on ice, right? That'd be perfect. Are we going to cook this tonight? No, not no? tonight. No. I, if I go back to Ontario, will you um, oh, welcome I'll, me I'll, over? I'll do the stuffing for you and have you there for dinner, and uh, that'd be a great night. You may only want me there once. Yeah. I eat no, a lot of fish. I, we'll have a nice bottle of Chardonnay, <laughs> or we'll have enough. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to put them on ice. All righty. Great. And now for the Tasco Tackle Selection of the Week. Today we're using an F-89 Fenwick Large Arbor Fly Reel with a Canadian Specialist Mooching Rod. Our line is 20-pound Berkeley Trilene XT. Our choice of bait, Oki Big Shooter Chrome Ultra Flasher. A Williams Quicksilver. Atomic Plug. And don't you forget your Tasco binoculars. Bobby Bond, you're a legend. Well, it may be in my own mind. In your own mind? <laughs> no, you're a legend. Let me ask you something. How many years did you play in the NHL? Uh, 17. Okay, and I mean, you were a phenomenal defenseman, right? And well, I guess you could say you were a tough guy. Well, uh, my, my secret about the game was the, was the strategy. I, I played the game, it was well thought out. Every time, my preparation was always good. Okay, and the real, I played against. the real claim to fame is you broke your leg, right? How'd you break your leg? Well, that, that was, I uh, stopped a shot at the blue line by Howe, and then in the old days, the defense used to take the face-offs uh, in our zone. And I went in the face off with Hal, and I did him, give him a couple of blinks like this, and uh, like this. And, yeah, no, just uh, just like that, and uh, uh, tried to distract him a little bit. Well, I won the face off, and I spun on my right leg, and it just went off like a cannon. And I was, uh, I went right to the ice, and I couldn't get back up again. So uh, uh, I knew something was uh, drastically wrong with my leg, and they carried me off in the stretcher. And uh, so then we went in the hospital, and we had our own doctors from Toronto there, and I was quite uh, happy with them. And and they said uh, they didn't think I could hurt it anymore. They'd try taping it up and freezing it and seeing if I could uh, put Placed my weight with a broken leg. So I played with, uh, I went back in uh, at the end of the third period and played a couple shifts, and then I went back out for overtime. I, they refroze it again. And uh, as soon as I hit the ice, I had the the shot came back. Junior Langwa threw it off the, uh, from uh, back of his net uh, blindly. It wasn't a good play, play by Langwa, but the uh, puck came back to me. I shot the puck, and it was one of those triple flutter blasts with a follow-up blooper. A Bobby uh, Bond uh, triple uh, yeah, flutter blast yeah, with no, a blooper? Yeah, no, not a Bobby Hall uh, classic shot. <laughs> <laughs> but it went off poor Bill Gadsby's stick and deflected the opposite direction on Sawchuck. And you guys, and, and you guys uh, went into. And so we won it in overtime. Uh, I think it was 143 of overtime on April the 23rd. And you went on to win the Stanley Cup? yeah. And now, we beat them quite easily in the fourth or seventh game. The reason I asked you the question, I think this guy could still play defense for Toronto right now. I mean, I've uh, seen some of the Toronto defensemen. You could do a better job right uh, now, buddy. Uh, I could stand in my one spot and I'd be fine. Yeah? <laughs> I know they have to come to me sooner or later. <laughs> Let's catch some fish. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> hey! <laughs> oh, Did I not yeah. have that lure on my side? <laughs> now you got a coho or you got a spring? Did it come up? It hasn't come up. No, he's still going too. Did I hear knuckles banging? Yeah, that's my knuckle. <laughs> Look at him back there. Really out there, eh? Here, I'll hold you in case you go to slip. He really took off. Oh, did, did he ever? You know what? So you think you got a spring or you got a coho? I, I, I think it's probably a coho, but it's a big one. Now, do you always fish with a 14-inch cigar jammed in your yummer? No, I don't. <laughs> but today I'm going to do it just on principle to see if I can. <laughs> well, this fish is going to keep you happy because no. he's out there quite a ways. You know, no. I never saw a person jump up as fast as you did out of the seat. <laughs> and then I'm going, my, what's my he got it on? It's on my spoon again. <laughs> well, my reflexes still aren't bad for an old turkey. You know what? You've got a nice fish here. It's, I just yeah. saw some tail. Bob, you fish pretty well everywhere. You've been up to Alaska? Yeah, we, we helicopter fished up there. Like four years ago, oh, there you go. Nice goes. fish, eh? Yeah, no, beauty. And you, and you do Quebec a lot? Yes, we do. Uh, we belong to a club in northern Quebec, uh, Cognawana Fishing and Hunting Club, one of the oldest clubs in Canada. Uh huh. And uh, I do mostly fly fishing up there. How do you compare the fishing here to other places you've been? 
Oh, I think this is as good as I've seen. Uh, West Coast you know, Resorts I, really got some. Yeah, no, I, I fish in the Queen Charlotte's and uh, seven or eight times and uh, had some good fishing, but uh, this, this is, is good. Uh, this is as good as I've seen. And you know what, Bobby? If he, as he comes in, right? I'm going to grab him before he goes under the boat. He's got some grass under him, Bob. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> You're oh. got, you got, you got twenty some odd pounds of fish there, buddy. Yeah. Nice fish, ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna lift them up in here. You know what? <laughs> it's like somebody put lead in this fish. That is a heavy. That's a oh. deep spring, eh? I hate to say it. It's my spoon again, pal. Oh. That is a big fish. Isn't, here. isn't he a beauty? There you go. I'll take that ride. You take that. Watch, oh. watch the teeth. You got yeah, him? I got him. And watch that hook. Yeah. Nice fish, Bobby. Oh, oh you know? <laughs> you got to get some great fillets. Oh, isn't he great? Put her there, pal. Nice yeah. fish. That's a dandy. Going fishing returns in a moment. Mr. Toronto Maple Leaf. Darryl. Ron Ellis. Pleasure, Daryl. Hey, it's been my pleasure. I've never <laughs> had so much fun in a week. Uh, this event you guys have got, right? Uh, it's GNA Events? Yes, uh, Jeff Godden uh, from GNA has just done a wonderful job. He approached myself at the Hall of Fame. Jeff and I had met at another event and he came up with this concept. The Hall of Fame loved the concept and here we are. What's better to have you? And I'm going to probably forget a couple guys. You got Henderson, Bathgate, Orlando was there, right? Sittler. Bond. When we thought of what players to invite, we wanted to definitely have a representation from the Hall of Fame. So we have two Hall of Famers, Andy Bathgate, Daryl Sittler. This is the 30th anniversary of Team Canada 72. So we thought our clients, our guests would enjoy hearing some of the stories that the series Paul and I played in together. And then we wanted to have a Leaf representative, and that's Bobby Bond. And we were so fortunate to get uh, one of the Vancouver Canucks to join us because a lot of some of the folks on the trip are from the West Coast. And uh, Orlin Curtinback came along and he just filled out the squad beautifully. Now, what's better than to have you guys? Honestly, my opinion, and I and I follow hockey still, right? <laughs> but I don't care what anybody says. And I, and, you know, I, I could get myself in trouble. <laughs> the original six, right? That's where it started. That's where it started. And you had six teams with the best players in the world. Daryl, I played three years in the old six-team league, and I cherished that. Uh, we didn't make a lot of money, but I would throw the money away just to have played in those three years. Um, I think why a trip like this is attractive and successful, the executives that are with us, they grew up with us. They had our cards, they played flipsies with them, and they had their idols and their heroes, and I think they connected with us as they were growing up and, and uh, stepping up the ladder in their career. And I really think that's the main reason we've made a connection here. I'm gonna use a word you don't hear a lot, but it was gaga. These guys that you know paid the dollars <laughs> to come and, and, and fish with you guys, they were mesmerized. I mean, yes. you guys were their heroes, are their heroes, and, and I think we had a great time. Now, where does the money go that, that, was, that was raised here? Well, I'm not too sure if many people realize this, but the Hockey Hall of Fame is a not-for-profit company we have a charitable status and we've partnered up with Ronald McDonald Children's Charities so both of these groups will uh, receive uh, uh, some of money to put to good use our our role at the Hockey Hall of Fame is to preserve the history of the game to honor the builders and the players that have made the game great and uh, then Canadians and Americans can come through our Hall of Fame and, and feel feel proud when they walk through and we're gonna do this again I'm telling you right now, we, we are when we get back from the trip, we are going to get together and, and have a little post-mortem on the trip, but already we are making plans for next year. You and Jeff Godden did one, <laughs> and I can say this, and it, it may get me in trouble on TV, you guys did one hell of a job this week and went to well, charity and then went to the Hall of Fame, and i got to thank you. And we appreciate you being with us um, to help us promote our event, and I know you and your crew, we got Dougie here, have done a wonderful job as well. Thanks it's been a great much. team. Well, we're going fishing too, eh? Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Again, thank you very much. And now for the Montana's Cookhouse Saloon Tip of the Week. It doesn't always pay to fish with the crowds. Salmon are known to spook like any other game fish. When the bite's off, 
seek out other areas of structure, that is, shoals, islands, and shorelines. You want to know something, Mr. Bond? I am not in the shape I thought I was in. Well, you're going to have a workout when you get back home. I'll tell you what. Now your wife says you're going to be on the treadmill and the bike. And the bike and the treadmill. And the, bike, and yep. the treadmill and, and the bike and yep. the bike and the treadmill. Right. She thought I was a little chunky. She wanted me to lose some weight. No, I've got the same complaint. You know? uh, so I know that I have to get back on the bike. I thought I was getting ready for a fantasy camp and I was going to get the skates back on, but <laughs> I got out of that. <laughs> Let's talk tackle. You know, we come out in the West Coast and it's all single action reels for the most part. Right. When I come out in the West Coast, I run a Fenwick 89 large arbor reel. You know, great drag system. Uh, the gears are great, it's nice and smooth. Oh, that's beautiful. That, that was nice to work with. And then we were running Canadian Specialist Series rods. Right. And, and you know, I'm going to say honestly, Everybody breaks a rod sooner or later. Yep. And well, I broke one today, and I hope the folks at uh, uh, Berkeley right. replace it real quick. Right. No. Well, they've been great. I, I buy all Berkeley equipment, and, the, and I've been doing it for years. And the, they've Ber been wonderful people to work with. Berkeley, Abu, Mitchell, Fenwick, it's all part of pure fishing, yep. right? Yep. Um, and again, we're running XT line, 20-pound test. Yep. Okay. That's right. And you said, what's this thing? And I says... It's well, atomic. It, it reminds me so much of the, some of the old lures that I used to use uh, back as a kid. And, uh, but, man, that's been dynamite here. A friend of mine, Tom Moss, makes them. And, and this was, and I think we said it in the show, it was the biggest selling lure for salmon fishing on the West Coast. It was a real commercial trolling plug, too. Right. Millions were sold. Oh, isn't that? You said to me this morning, what else are we going to use? Yes. No, I says, uh, hey, Oki Flasher, silver prism with that hot red stripe. Uh, it, and it's been working. And, and what do we put behind it, our, our little Quicksilver? That's right. I was going to steal it on you before I leave. You told me you were going, and there's a story behind the Quicksilver. Every time I put it down, I was catching little fish, and I says, here, you take it on that side, and you end up with a big spring. Yep. You end up with all the big coho. Yeah. That's well, a hot lure. It's a hot lure, and you called it, my friend. And I'm going to get you some. Yeah, I appreciate that. If you stay on your own side of the boat this afternoon, you can have all you want. I'll tell you what. I'll, I'll hide. You'll hide? <laughs> I'll tell you what. <laughs> This has been a ball. Let's go fishing. Yep. <laughs> go set my rod up, will you? Okay. <laughs> Going fishing returns with the Duquesne Gas Grill Shore Lunch. Tony Austin, right? Yep, that's Steve right. Austin's brother. Yeah. Wrong Steve Austin. We've done this before, right? That's right, exactly. And I said, if you fall over the yellow timber. Yep. <laughs> what I've got to say is you are the best cook on the coast. As far as the camps go and the resorts, right? I've never had better food. Thank you very much. Say that again? That. Thank you very much. All right, we'll do it this now. What you're doing is smoking fish, right? That's right. How yeah. do you prepare it before you put it in the smoker? I take three quarter cup of brown sugar, quarter cup of pickling salt, cover it, pack it down, brine it for 12 hours. Yeah. And then take it out of the brine. No water at all, or do you mix no, it with water? No, just to dry. And you're just actually rolling it in it? That's right. Packing it down. Yeah, that's right. What'll happen is the moisture will come from come out of the salmon. And take the salt will take a lot of the moisture out, and it'll just uh, it just caramelizes. It just brings uh, the sugar yep. into a liquid form. Yeah. And then uh, just let it sit there. Okay. Let me ask you something. You got a Bradley smoker. That's right. Right. Fantastic. Why do you like the Bradley? Well, it's great because it's a self-feeding uh, device there with the pucks on the yep. side, so you're not constantly adding chips. You just fill up the cylinder, and it just pushes the pucks in and smokes it. Right. How long are you going to smoke it for? Nine hours. At what temperature? Low temperature. Low temperature. Yep. And then you've got the greatest eating smoked salmon in the world, right? That's right. You do a pretty good fish. Thanks. Put her here, Mr. Austin. All right. Cheers, eh? Let's go fishing. Perfect. Hey. All right. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Bobby? What do you think? I don't know. I hope he's still here. Yeah, he's here. Not bad. Not bad. You know, he never took that heart. He grabbed that tomic, right? Yeah. And he just pulled and pulled. I don't know whether we got a spring or whether we got a coho. The way he's coming up, I think we got a coho. They got it. Uh, I hope they stay out of our way. I guess you want the net, do you? You're gonna need the net shortly. Yeah. I got. I think we got a while yet. This Maybe is another 20 fish. minutes or so. This could be a hundred pounder. You no, know, that's. Just... <laughs> well, Didn't take it hard. He just pulled it down. Thump, thump. Think it's a coho, or you think it's a? Maybe it is a coho. I don't know. Maybe we have the record here. You think we have the record? <laughs> You've got the record for bumping into me as I'm trying to get a fishing rod all day today. You like fishing, eh? Oh, indeed. I, I'm not saying uh, you're a fish hog, right? No, oh, no, I, I wouldn't do that. Oh, no, not, you, not, you wouldn't go uh, that far to say that? Not quite. You want to know something? No. <laughs> you're a fish hog. No, you're not. <laughs>
Well, I know I have to be quick with you just to, just to try <laughs> and Quick with me? With, I only just, got to bring in one just, fish, just, you were getting them all. Just to stay with you, I have to be quick. We had a lot of fun today. It's like Moby Dick, he comes <laughs> up, he goes down. Look at, and I'm trying to catch him with a single action reel. I'm not as fast as I used to be with this reel either. <laughs> what do you think? I don't know, I think you're doing pretty damn oh, good for I'm getting too old for this. Oh yeah, no, you're too old. Yeah, you're still you know, a rookie. <laughs> Really? Thanks, yeah, buddy. No, no, you're Thanks, just, buddy. You're, you're just a puppy. I've had a lot of people yeah, say no. I was a rookie, though. You <laughs> <laughs> My wife tells me that all the time. Oh, is that right now? <laughs> I bet you she tells you some other things, too. She's told me a lot of things. Hey, 30 years I've been married to that woman. And she's Polish, so you yeah, really got to oh, understand. I'm going through a lot. Yeah, no. Well, that's a good background right off the bat. I know that. Okay, right? you get the net now. Here we go. What do we got here? Yeah, we got a spring. Not quite as big as yours, Bobby. Oh, what can I say? He's a nice one. Is it nice? Let's see, he's got that tomic wrapped in his jaws. Now, I don't want to lose him. I'm going to get in front of you. How's this? Can you hang on one sec, Bobby? Go with it, Bob. You got him. Way to go, oh. buddy. Oh. Now, oh. this is, yeah. these are just average. Now, that is probably going to be the finest eating fish I'm taking home. What do you think? Oh, I think so. We're getting a little roll here. Oh. Nice oh. fish on a tomic. Now look how deep he is. Not, oh. not a real long fish, right? No. But a deep fish. Oh. Here, can you hold that rod? For yeah, me? I got it. I'm gonna bring this fish out without getting that big side wash in my hands. Nice and look silver still, eh? Look at how strong he is. Yeah. Well, that was at 100 feet, Bob. Oh. You know that? It nice a fish. Beauty. He's a beauty. Nice, nice He's fish. You know, that's the thing of beauty. Is that nice or what? Oh. Now, yours is bigger. Well, I knew mine was bigger. You did, eh? Yeah, no, but you, you know. Mine fought harder. Oh, well, no, I know that, <laughs> but, I, but you, you put some fit, salt on his tail. That's what you did. Listen, is this paradise or what? Well, it's fantastic. It's, it's phenomenal, eh? Yeah, no. And, Listen, <laughs> if you get the chance, don't pass up the opportunity to visit West Coast Resorts up in British Columbia. Yep. Especially at Millbank, right? Right. Will Chandler, the Queen Charlotte's, it's that, all great. That's right. Bobby, thanks. Thanks very much. We'll see you next week. Yep. Let's Take go care, fish. Bye. Let's go catch a couple more. Okay, Let's one go. more. Fishing has been brought to you by Yamaha, when you want the best. Abu Garcia, for life. Berkeley Trilene, Canada's strongest fishing line. And by Montana's Cookhouse Saloon, fresh country cooking. Going Fishing would like to thank the following fine sponsors. Going Fishing. We'll be